So, Darren, thanks for joining us. No problem, Rob. How are you doing? Hey, all good. And uh, I'm very much looking forward, in fact, to placing the product that you're about to tell us a bit more about. And it's a product that's been out for a while now. But given that we've had what feels like the never ending winter, uh, mm -hmm. the dragonfly is something that I want to place come spring again. And it was your pet project. So I tell you what, before we talk about the product, how's it been seeing the product out on market and received as it has been? Uh, it's been great. It's kind of been surreal in a way. It's something I never thought I'd end up doing, having um, a micro cam <laughs> in the world. So that I've designed it's it's like kind of piece of gear that everyone's so so keen and psyched on to like it walk is. into the shops and just see it there. And um, yeah, having even just the fact like walking into the shops with my mum and being like, "Mum, that was me." <laughs> <laughs> I mean. Micro cams, I think, are one of those things that climbers have a close affinity with, uh, partially because of the fact that, you know, more often than not, when you place a micro cam, you're placing it because you really need to place it. And yeah. so th that bond between you, know, you and it is very strong. But anyway, all of this is off piece questioning and none of which you probably prepared for. So Dragonfly, for those who don't know, tell us more. How many sizes? Why them versus something like the dragon and any other things you can think of? Sure, yeah. The, so the dragonflies are a range of uh, small cams or micro cams. So we've got six different sizes um, going from the size six in the dragonfly cams, which um, is equivalent to a, a small dragon one, um, all the way down to uh, our size one dragonfly, which is 7.6 mil, I think, from memory. Which is having which is seen them, pretty small, yeah. Is a, it's small. alarmingly small, isn't it? But also, <laughs> um, you know, impressively strong as well. Yeah, reassuring safe at six kilonewtons for that. Which, which um, is better than two kilonewtons. Yeah, yeah, you feel pretty happy placing that still, despite how small it is, yeah, knowing it's six kilonewtons is standing behind you. And Certainly the one you've got in your hand, the largest one, the cool thing when you compare those to, say, for instance, the smallest size in the Dragon is yeah. that narrow head, which just, they just feel great when you place them, basically. Yeah, they've got a nice narrow head, which just allows them to fit in those little awkward cracks, which kind of don't quite open up, or the little pods or um, pockets, so they fit in those quite nicely. Um and they're also just on the smaller size of the dragon, so they kind of complement the dragon sizes as well. So you, you've not got a size for size of the dragon and the dragonflies. You've got a, you've got different placement options. So if you've got the rack of both on your, on your, on your harness, you you can choose. And if you've got a, a dragon that cam that doesn't go in, pick up the dragonfly cam in the same size, and it should go in. So there's a bit of variation, a bit of wiggle room, which means you get a yeah. range if you do have all of them and. I, for one, when I'm climbing at places like Gogarth, for instance, tend to carry like some Yosemite big wall rack of camera <laughs> devices just to plug them in left, right and centre. Yeah, you can never have too many. <laughs> and so they have the extendable sling, much like the Dragons. Yeah, yeah, extendable sling. We've got a nice compact um, bar tack here, which means that if even if you pull it from either end, the bar tack will just pop through that thumb loop without getting snagged, which is quite nice, especially if you gripped. Um, and then you've got the thumb loop, which is good for, for aiding, which is what these are going to be used a lot for as well. Funnily yeah. enough, I mean, on yeah. the dragons, I never missed the thumb loop, but with the micro cam side of things, yeah, um, you know, yeah, this is going back a fair few years ago now, but when I last went up El Cap, I think up until that point, I'd never quite realised how crucial, you know, like that thumb loop was from a like, you know, clipping in perspective on those high runners and all the rest of it. It's specialist for a British audience, but necessary for a big wall. Yeah, I think so. I, I can't talk from a direct experience because I still haven't managed to convince the MM to fund the, the 70 <laughs> but <laughs> maybe soon. You'd have no shortage of micro cams, that's for sure. Yeah. And then... Um, um, yeah, sorry, carry on. Yeah, so the other features we've got, we've got a nice ergonomic thumb press and um, trigger as well. So when you just pick it up, it just it just feels like it fits right in your hand. It just feels nice and trigger. You can just sit there, play over all day. Um, and obviously when you actually need to put it in the rocket, it feels great as well. You're just not going to fumble it. 
the thing that I noticed with him is like the tension, because you want the balance in tension, don't you? You want yeah. enough tension so it feels really responsive, really springy. You don't want them too springy, though, so that it actually pumps you out almost as you're placing them. But neither do you want them quite sloppy so that actually they'll be quite, you know, they'll potentially like wiggle out of key placements. Yeah, you need a, a good balance of spring force, like you say, to, to hold it in the rocks. That's really, really important. Too much spring force and it will just try and pop itself back out. But too little spring force, it might fall out or it's more likely to walk as well if you, if you haven't got that. But I think these feel quite snappy and nice and quite positive in the hands, which is which is really good. Dare I ask how many types of spring you probably went through whilst putting these, you know, through the design <laughs> process? Uh, many, many types of spring. <laughs> I was driving to our spring suppliers quite often to, to get it. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're an art, I think, springs. An art that I haven't quite understood just yet, but we've got there here with these so far. It must be so strange the level of knowledge you have about really crazy things like that. Yeah, it's something that I never thought I'd be that involved in springs and um spring making machines is like probably not very useful outside of this project but i guess but. the final thing to talk about as well is the alloy um used on the actual the camming units themselves because yeah. again talking about balance there you want them to be firm enough so that they well don't just they're not like toffee but you do want them soft so that they actually bite a little do you want to tell us a bit about that balance yeah, so we've got the 6082 aluminium alloy, which is the same as on our Dragon Cams. So that's a slightly softer aluminium, which allows you to, uh, it gives it a, a bit more bite into the rock. So it's not quite as durable as a harder aluminium, but it's more likely to actually deform ever so slightly under load and actually kind of bite and grip into the rock, which is kind of ideal when you've got marginal placements. So it's great for that. And we've also got the triple grip um, on our cam surface. So that, that again helps with the, the holding power. So that's got the um, removal of the anodizing and the teeth um, in two directions there. So that's the triple grip. And we're stuck with the 13.75 mil camming angle, which is a really great balance between range and holding power. The way I've, I mean, because obviously I'm, completely clueless when it comes to the actual science or physics of the 13.75 but the way I've always looked at it is that it doesn't matter whether you over cam it or under cam it it still does what it says on the tin in terms of its holding power yeah the it's the the camming angle kind of refers to this logarithmic spiral so that's just uh, the term for the shape of the cam that is a fantastic buzzword, Darren. That is, yeah. Has made, made yeah, this I'm playing buzzword easy. bingo with myself here. I've written them all down. <laughs> <laughs> but what that means is that the it's the same angle anywhere where it's placed. So like you say, you can place it fully cammed or um, kind of half open. And at that point, you've still got the same holding power and same, same reassuringly good placement. Cool. Well, I would say I think that's everything, but I'm sure you could probably keep going for another half an hour to 45 <laughs> minutes. Is there anything um, we've forgotten whilst we're still on? Um, so the one main thing between difference between the dragons and the dragonflies is these have got a super flexible stem, um, which is quite important because you, when you're placing these smaller cams, they're often in slightly worse placements or they're off, off to one side and you have to scratch around trying to find these placements. So they might... Uh, so they're more likely to want to uh, to walk. So with the, su the super flexible stem, that takes that factor out a little bit more. Um, so that's a big difference there. Um, I think that's probably it, really. I thought I was here to prompt you originally, but I'm glad you prompted me on that absolutely essential point because the flexibility of them is crucial. The other thing I was going to say as well is like, you know, having used both, you know, micro cams like the dragonfly and cams like the dragons for years it takes a lot to wear these things out a lot doesn't it it's you know they i mean i don't think with my original dragons which would have been the first generation have been going mm. for however many years the dragon's been out it must be coming up to eight or more i'd imagine yeah i think it's probably about 10 years for the dragons yeah. now the, the original dragons anyway 
which is now making me question whether I need to send them back in for a <laughs> sling replacement and a service. Yeah, you should probably send them back in for a sling, yeah. Climbing with death traps. But, um, but yeah, with the dragon uh, fly, I mean, because obviously yeah. it is a more flexible unit, it's just worth being a bit more sort of like aware of making sure all the cables are in good condition before using them. Yeah, so with, with every bit of small gear, they there is some compromises when you're making stuff smaller. They tend to be not quite as durable as the larger pieces of gear. So yeah, they do they do require a little bit more care and love and attention um, when you're looking after them compared to the, something like the dragonflies, which is really uh, sorry, the dragons, which is really bombproof. Um, but they're they're not fragile by any means. Um, I mean, the biggest ones rated to to nine kilonewtons, so um, not weak or flimsy, but um, just needs that little bit more care and attention in between. Which, to be fair, is something we could probably all do to all of our kit all the time, regardless of whether it's big or small. Yeah, we've certainly got the time to go through it at the moment, haven't we? <laughs> it's, it's all I've probably the most use my racks had now is me just spraying it with uh, something like GT85 <laughs> or something like yeah. that. Make sure it's not on a rust prior to the spring. Hey, well, Darren, I would love to ask what you're obviously working on now, but you'd have to kill me if you answered it. So I will just simply leave you there, say thanks for your time. And uh, yeah, let's hope spring is going to have sprung by the time that we next catch up. Yeah, that'd be good. Look forward to seeing your mails next soon. Real. Cheers, Darren. Cheers, Rob. Bye.